This is the 68th Venice Film Festival, and I am 68. So, and, and just to add to that weirdness, the opening film, the opening film at the festival was called The Ides of March, and that's my birthday. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, well, at, at, at my age, you know, uh, I, having made as many movies as I have, not as many as Woody Allen, mind you, but still, um, I, I, I believe I have changed just in my understanding of my own version of cinema and how, how much footage I have to shoot, how I edit. I, I'm, I don't shoot a lot now, and I don't, I edit very quickly. Um, and that's different from what I did when I first started out and was just exploring what cinema was. Uh, but in terms of changing, um, really, uh, it's, there's a basic principle for me that's always been there, which is that I give the movie what it wants, you know? The movie tells you what it needs, and I give it that. I have sometimes had people say, are you going to Cronenbergize this? You know, meaning are you going to put some imprint on it that the people will know is yours or something. I've never thought that way and I never worked that way. You, you have to be very honest with your project. Once you decide to do the script of A Dangerous Method, then my devotion is completely to the script and to the characters and to the period. There's no thought in my mind of anything else. Uh, he's asking, what is this doing here, basically? <laughs> and it was given to me by a fan outside. It's, it's Siggy in uh, San Lorenzo colors. San Lorenzo is the football team I like from Argentina. And uh, you, you know, see, this is what I have to deal with on the set. <laughs> you know, this, this is what he brings to the set. Christopher had written such a dense script. And, you know, you're trying to sort of get a concentrated solution of these characters, you know, which obviously are very infamous. Everybody knows who, you know, these people are other than Sabina. So I just really concentrated on the script. I thought that my main work really revolved around trying to get the rhythm of the script. It was written in such a way that I felt like it was a piece of music. Any extra research I could do was really a luxury. I got a great book on Jung, which was like Jung for children. And it was a sort of a, an idiot's handbook. And I think I found pretty much everything that I needed to find in that little book. Actually, this isn't, to me, is not my first period piece because uh, I did uh, Naked Lunch, which was set in the 1950s and, and really required the costumes and research into William Burroughs and Allen Ginsberg and Jack Kerouac and so on, and we reproduced that era, Spider. really. Uh, Spider was also a period piece. And, uh, and actually, uh, M. Butterfly also was a period piece. So for me, um, it, it's not unusual. You know, you, 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 you research a location, an era, the kind of costumes people wear. It's, it's, it's sort of not, it's exciting because you, it's a challenge, you know, but, uh, to, to give, because you can't just put people in the costumes and shoot at the locations and feel that you've, there's a magical thing. That, that you have to try to catch. And it's, uh, it's very difficult to know if you've done it or not. Sometimes you have to do something unforgivable just to be able to go on living.